Once upon a time, there was a princess named Ifunanya, who found herself pregnant without being married. When her mother, the queen, discovered the truth, she was furious and ashamed. She yelled at Ifunanya, declaring her a disgrace to their royal family. Ifunanya! The queen screamed. You've spurned rich suitors, governor's sons, only to bear a child with a poor farmer. I will never allow you to keep that baby as long as I live. Not willing to part with her child, the next morning, Princess Ifunanya set out on a journey with some guards, crossing five rivers and venturing into a dense forest. After two days of travel, she left her baby in a basket with a letter attached, bidding him farewell with a heavy heart. Meanwhile, in the forest lived a hunter named Obina and his wife, Ogechi, who had endured years of ridicule from their village due to their inability to have children. One morning, the cry of a baby in a nearby basket awakened Obina. He followed the sound and discovered the adorable child. Overjoyed, Ogechi felt as though the gods had finally blessed them with a child of their own. Obina carefully opened the letter attached to the basket and read its contents aloud. In the letter, Princess Ifunanya revealed her identity and entrusted her child, whom she named Okachukwu, to the care of Obina and Ogechi. She asked them to keep his true lineage a secret until he turned 30, emphasizing his divine gift. With gratitude and sorrow, the princess's heartfelt plea touched the hearts of Obina and Ogechi, who vowed to raise Okachukwu with love and care, honoring his royal heritage while keeping his identity a secret until the appointed time. Okichukwu grew up to be a diligent, courageous, and robust man, learning the ways of the forest from his father, Obina. He honed his skills until he surpassed his father, earning the title of King of the Wild for his prowess. Meanwhile, Princess Ifunanya married the wealthiest king among five communities, enjoying a life of abundance. They welcomed a daughter named Ada, who possessed the spirit of a warrior. Strong and fearless, she grew bigger than her peers that she almost looked like a giant. Ada led armies to victory in battles. However, despite her accomplishments, Ada remained unmarried at 25 due to her intimidating demeanor. No man agreed settling down with Ada because of intimidating size. Ada's lack of suitors troubled her deeply, leading to tearful nights. Yet, her mother reassured her, promising that the right man would love her for who she was. One day, the king tasked Ada with investigating a neighboring Igbo community. On her journey, she narrowly avoided being struck by Okachukwu's arrow as he hunted in the wild. Apologizing for the close call, Okachukwu and Ada felt an instant connection, as if they had known each other for ages. Okachukwu liked Ada, just as she was despite her size. Their bond blossomed into love, but when Ada invited Okachukwu to a royal dinner, he declined expressing his commitment to his aging parents and his village. Princess Ada's decision to distance herself from Okachukwu left him restless and unable to sleep. Seeking solace, he confided in his mother about the situation. With wisdom and love, his mother assured him of his strength and urged him to follow his heart. You're strong and wise, she said calmly. If your heart truly belongs to Ada, then it's worth pursuing her. As for us, your father and I will manage just fine. Wherever you go, whatever you do, I'll be here waiting for you. Moved by his mother's words, Okachukwu hugged her tightly before returning to bed, his mind set on his journey ahead. The next day, Okachukwu prepared to leave his village, packing gifts for Ada and provisions for his journey. It took him two days to reach Princess Ada's prosperous land, where he marveled at the modernization and hospitality of the people. As a stranger in the community, Okachukwu sought directions to the palace from an elderly man, who kindly guided him while explaining that entry required an invitation from the royal family. Despite the challenge, Okachukwu remained determined to reunite with the love of his heart, Princess Ada. When Okachukwu arrived at the palace, he faced initial refusal to enter until he presented the invitation card from Princess Ada. Once inside, he was greeted by the princess, who embraced him with joy. They strolled through the royal garden, reminiscing about their shared experiences and the bond they had formed. As they talked, 
Okachukwu expressed his intention to meet Ada's parents and formalize their relationship. Ada was thrilled that someone had embraced her, despite her unconventional traits. Returning to his parents, Okachukwu shared the news. Three days later, the royal family hosted a grand feast to welcome their prospective son-in-law. The dining hall was filled with abundant food and drink, with both families seated together. As the king and queen engaged Okachukwu in conversation, the queen noticed a birthmark on his right hand that triggered a sense of familiarity, although she couldn't quite place it. Despite the hint of something amiss, the festivities continued with joy and celebration. Queen Ifunanya, burdened by a secret she carried for years, sought a private audience with Ogechi. Amidst the laughter of Ada and Okachukwu, she confessed the heart-wrenching truth. She abandoned her son, Ogachukwu, in a forest out of fear of her parents' disapproval. Begging for forgiveness, she pleaded with Ogechi to reunite her with her lost child. Tears welled up in Ogechi's eyes as she reminisced about the cherished moments shared with Okachukwu. Despite the pain of parting, she understood Queen Ifunanya's desperation. Unable to bear children herself, Ogechi couldn't deny the queen's plea. As dusk settled, an urgent meeting convened, shrouded in mystery. Queen Ifunanya, with a heavy heart, confessed her past sins to Okachukwu, revealing the truth of his origins. Shocked and wounded, Okachukwu grappled with the revelation that Ada, his beloved wife, was his sister. Amidst tears and turmoil, Queen Ifunanya, the king, Ogechi, and Obina pleaded for Okachukwu's forgiveness. In a moment of profound understanding, Okachukwu found it in his heart to forgive his mother. And so, amidst the echoes of reconciliation, they embraced a new beginning, where forgiveness paved the path to a happily ever after.